This video is sponsored by Masterworks. Welcome back, guys. We're here with another first time project. Really pumped to show the process of this one. This is actually going into the watchtower. Uh, as I previously stated on my last video, there was one last piece to the puzzle, and this is it. I'm excited to bring you along through the process. There's been about six different revisions to this project, and I'm excited to show you what I uh, came up with. So I just give you once over of the mop of burl slabs that I got from Geo Veneer. I had them flattened and ready to go. Those are actually going to be the backs of this project. The backs, you're thinking, what is he talking about? Well, I'm making my first ever couch slash sectional. So you saw the mop of burl slabs. These are panels of walnut that are actually going to be the arms or the sides of the couch. This is going to be an eight and a half foot by eight and a half foot sectional. And we're going to have custom cushions made for it too later in the video. But right now you see me trimming the side panels down to size. And just like every project, there's always a mistake. As you can see, I didn't mark where my dominoes were. So I had to cut off about another half inch to the length of the panel. So after fixing my mistake, I cut the other panel to size. And I started working on the shaping of the arm. But one of the hard parts about this project was limited space in the watchtower. Making sure that the seating area was going to be comfortable the size of the cushions that we were going to make and also leaving adequate room for walking and everything because the square footage of that spot up there is actually pretty small. So this part of the process, I just kind of winged it. I wanted a not super uniform shape, something that kind of tapered down a little bit that looked good, but also was cohesive with the design and with everything up there. This was a little bit more of a, a modern type design. I guess you can call it like a mountain modern is kind of what we were going for for this space. So here's the shape that I kind of come up with, a little bit of a taper, a little bit of a round over. So I started trimming off that portion with my Fest tool track saw and then started rounding over with the RL 150 just to get it as close as possible by hand. That way I could stand it up and get a visual of what this would look like from the side profile view. And here it is. So this is kind of what I came up with. We got a real slight taper. It might be kind of hard to see in the video, but this is what I came up with and I was super happy with it. So now it was time to get the other panel ready for transfer of the shape with my router. So I got it flat with the RL150 again, got all the residual glue off from the glue up and uh, just started doing my first pass with the template routing. Now, if you've ever done template routing, it's really important. You have a really sharp template routing bit and I haven't sharpened mine in a while. It is a carbide bit, but as you'll see here in a second, I had a little bit of tear out on the front end. So I had to do a little bit more shaping with the sander after the fact. All in all, it came out good, but just a little tip, get your bit sharpened if you're using it on a super hardwood. So in the original design, this whole couch was going to be one unit. In the beginning stages of this project for the watchtower, there were going to be French doors that were going to open up. So we would have been able to get it in there. Over the year that this project was finished, it's actually just a sliding door on each side. So I had to make it to where this whole thing was capable of being taken apart, all separate pieces. So I had the two side panels, the two back panels, the corner post, and then there'll be a big center section that'll support all of the cushions. So I didn't want the backs of this couch to be at a straight 90. So I did a five and a half degree rake on the backs of these slabs. That way there was just a little bit of angle. So when the cushions, because they're gonna be free floating, it was more of a natural feel instead of being so straight up and down. I had all of these pieces connected with 12 by 100 dominoes, and then I was going to use fasteners on the inside. That way nothing was visible. So you kind of saw the first look of how this thing is going to shape up. The slabs are kind of like floating in the back. And then the next part of the process is now making the bottom structure that will house all of the cushions. You know, doing these first time projects, you really don't know what you're doing, or at least I don't. You know, I kind of just wing it every time. I have a design that I throw together on Fusion 360 to get, you know, a good visual. But these are the parts where you really hope that it comes together properly. And in my head, I wanted this couch to be a really low profile couch that kind of fit that modern vibe because the backs are open to windows. So I didn't want a super tall couch that was intrusive to the view, but also not too low to where it was uncomfortable to get up. So I made this structure out of Naughty Alder. I had to do it in two different sections, the left side and then the right side, and then eventually ended up gluing them all together. Just use your standard 10 by 50 dominoes. And I was planning on staining this a color. I wasn't quite sure yet on what I was gonna do, but it's always good to get everything prepped. So I do a roundovers on everything, get them ready for upholstery because these are the parts where there's gonna be weaving so it supported all of the cushions. So I needed this thing to be elevated, right? So I just took some more Naughty Alder. I think I raised it at about seven and a half inches off the ground. That way when the cushions were made, we're sitting in the 16 to 18 inch seating height mark. After that, glued it all up towards one unit. And this part was really exciting because after it dried the next day, I got to actually put it inside the whole structure to get a 
really good idea of what this thing was going to look like. And I was pretty pumped, you know, it was starting to come together, but I still needed to have everything be one unit and structurally sound to where it didn't move once people sat on it. So I had to come up with a way to attach that bottom base to the side panels. So here's kind of a once over on what the whole structure looks like before I start making the brackets to attach that inner panel. It kind of gives you an idea of that back rake at the five and a half degrees in the slabs. It gives you an idea of the bottom structure and how everything's connected. Real rough right now, there's nothing sanded, nothing fastened, but this is just kind of the rough draft of what's to come. So I ended up taking some inch and a half by inch and a half angle iron and started shaping out some brackets for the left and the right side. You know, your standard drill holes and I ended up using threaded inserts, but there was the one corner that was kind of visible from the bottom. So I ended up just doing kind of a radius on it. That way it was a little bit more finished out looking versus than just square. So shaped up the angle iron, then I started to install them onto the panels, mark out for all of the threaded inserts, making sure both panels have the same height, and this is pretty straightforward. You guys have seen this probably a thousand times, so I don't really need to go over this in crazy big detail. But yeah, once they were installed, I knew it was going to be rock solid and plenty of support for the actual weight of people sitting on it. Uh, both of them done. Obviously, with every project, you always want to do dry fitting, and you always want to test out everything before you do final assembly, especially before finish or anything like that. It's just super, super important. Trust me, I've learned the hard way. Next step is to do the inner fasteners like I talked about originally. I'm doing just some wood screws through the dominoes. Yes, you can use the domino connector system, but I don't have that, so this is my version of doing it. So we were actually getting really close to taking this whole thing to upholstery, but I needed everything to be solid and ready to go. I wasn't putting any finish on it yet because I didn't want anything to get banged up while I was at their shop. So I installed all the dominoes with everything pre-drilled and ready to go for assembly, rounded everything over, and just did a real light sand with the uh, the Rotex just to get it roughed out, not finished sanded. I just wanted everything to be halfway prepped so when I got it back from the upholstery, I had a little bit less work. I actually get asked all the time what kind of glue that I used. And really when I'm doing structural stuff like this or glue ups, I've always used Type Bond 3. It's the strongest that they offer and it's always done me very well. So as far as standard glue, that's what I use. But for repairs like this right here, I have some tear out from the router. I always use Starbond or any sort of CA glue. They're kind of my go-to and it uh, works really well, really quick. Within a minute, everything's dry, sanded, ready to go. All right, so we're on site at the upholstery shop. This is the first time assembling everything as one piece with all the fasteners and with the brackets and after I did it, it was super rigid, I was super happy, and it was now just a waiting game. So this part of the process was probably the longest, the most painstaking for both Frank's shop and myself, just to make sure we got the seat height right, the cushion material, the density of the foam. Uh, this is the actual leather we're using, it's called Bomber Brown, and I came back here probably dozens of times just to try the different seating options out, whether it was too high or too small. And then finally, we ended up cutting the, the seat height in half from what it originally was, and we did a full custom back cushion and bottom cushion. So Frank's upholstery being a super high-end car upholstery shop, they've never really done a couch like this before, and neither have I. So we first started experimenting with densities of foam, but we found out that the thicker you go, no matter how soft it is, it'll get harder, and it eventually became so hard that I mean you didn't even want to sit on it so we scrapped that idea and we ended up going with two downfilled pillows for the bottom with a layer of one inch foam and synthetic Dacron wrapped around the whole thing. Being sponsored by Superclear really gives me the opportunity to utilize their products in a bunch of various different ways and in this case I was going to use it for the side panels to seal up and close up all of the holes and inclusions that were on the outside. A little tip for you is I like to use any sort of spray lacquer Spray it into a cup and use a brush to actually put on the wood to prevent any dieback from the pigment that I'm going to put in the epoxy, which in this case will be black. You know, a lot of guys like to use a tabletop epoxy or some sort of like CA glue, but I found that this is a real nice, fast, kind of superficial way to block any sort of stain because some of this liquid dye really will stain the pores of a wood like this, like walnut or oak. For this one, I'm using the 24-hour tabletop epoxy paired with their liquid black pigment that super clear sells. This stuff I usually like to give at least two days, maybe three days just to be safe. But in this case, it was 95 or 100 degrees for that week. So within 24 hours, I was almost ready for sand. But 
in all cases, I always let at least two days go by just because there is always going to be some shrinkage. I'm not sure quite the percentage, but it's going to be a little bit. So the longer you can wait, the better. Another thing too is when you're mixing in pigment, it's really important for you to actually mix your resin first once your A and B is in the bucket. That way you can see all the striations go away after the three to five minutes. In this case, I didn't do that, so I had to mix it just a little bit longer just to be sure everything was mixed properly. But just as a fail safe, mix your resin first, then add pigment last. To finish up these panels, a little bit of star bun work and then moving on to the restore for the slabs. So I'm using their flap disc with, I think it's 100 grit paper because Moppa Pro has a lot of sharp parts on the actual live edge portion. So I switched between using the wire wheel and this little flap disc with the sandpaper on it just to make sure that it was soft enough but still showed all the texture and all the really cool crevices that nature has created. Normally if this was a table project I would have filled all of the little burl parts on the top of the surface but since this was going to have zero traffic on the back sides I just kept it natural and left it raw. So here's a cool peek of the bottom side to actually get an idea of how they did the webbing. I'm not sure the material they use, but it's kind of leather-like and has kind of a spongy texture to it, but also really forgiving. And they put this synthetic material over the top of it to give it a little bit more support. Ultimately, I decided that I was going to go ahead and stain this thing ebony or black, if you will. So did a quick sand and then went to town to get it all stained up. So the finishing part of the process I don't usually show because I like to use a conversion varnish and I use my buddy's shop and I'm not really allowed to film in there. So I got it all stained up, took it to my buddy's shop, shot everything, it's ready to go, but now let's go deliver it. All right guys, you're definitely going to want to listen to this. This will put a smile on your face, I guarantee it. As we all know, the price of just about everything has been rising all year due to inflation. I've really noticed this because of all the lumber that I have to buy for all of my woodworking projects. You know, look, I'm a woodworker, not a financial planner, but I know that normally people would be trying to make up for these higher costs by investing their money. Because a typical portfolio of stocks and bonds, like many of us and you have, has already lost around 20% this year, according to Goldman Sachs. So what are these major banks and firms like Goldman doing to adapt? They're investing 30 to 50% of their portfolios into alternative assets, things that aren't hurt by inflation or stock market downturns, alternative assets like contemporary art, not only does this art have near zero correlation to the stock market, but the numbers show it's actually helped by inflation. The last time inflation was this high, it appreciated on average of 33% per year, which is absolutely incredible. That's why I'm excited that today's sponsor is Masterworks. Masterworks is a platform that lets people like you and I invest in shares of the same contemporary art. Again, I'm no financial expert. I'm not an art connoisseur either, but Masterworks, you don't have to be. Their team has over 75 years of experience with the art market, and since 2019, they've delivered on average 29% net returns to their investors with paintings from legendary artists like Picasso, Banksy. And with all this news leading more investors towards alternative assets, demand is only growing, and Masterworks actually has a waitlist right now. But my subscribers can skip that waitlist with the link below. A little assistant. Okay, quick trivia question. How many hides of leather did it take to finish all of the cushions? One in the corner, just we'll slide it. A little heavier now. Quality, dude. Yeah, do I know. Those things work. That's probably pretty straight. Is it right? Yeah. So the air escapes. 
Yeah, they put the perforation. You'll see what I'm talking about when you sit down. Sit down? Yeah, I'll roll back. Yeah, I'll roll back. But I'm gonna see what I'm talking about. You like how they did 45s? Yeah, that's yeah. actually sick. It's like that, huh? There it is, baby. Right. Hips. But not for us, short kings. Well, y'all, what do you think? First ever couch slash sectional. I think it came out really cool. Fits the space really well, but I would truly love your feedback. Give me your thoughts below on um, the leather choice, the, the wood species choice, and how you think it all meshes together. This one was really tough because my client gave me full autonomy on everything. So what you see here is all by my choice, the wood, the color, the leather, the whole nine. So if you could give me any sort of feedback, it would truly be valued and help me for the next one. Again, thank you guys so much for watching if you've made it this far. But be sure to comment below and let me know how many hides of leather were used in this project. But as always, get out there and build something. Cheers.